Alright, David Harry here and in this video I'm going to be doing an unboxing of a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus but also probably to make this a little bit more different than all the other videos where somebody unboxing one of these mics is I'm just going to do a little bit of kind of like looking around the buttons on it and see what they all do and also as well in this video one of these as well a nice big fairy jacket for the microphone for when it gets cold Okay, in fact, no, that's actually a dead cat to stop wind. It's got nothing to do with keeping the mic warm in the winter. Right, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to kind of go around the box. If there's anything on the outside of the box that you feel you might need to look at in a bit more detail, just pause the video as I go around. And I'll just make a point of some of the uh, the main points on the outside here. So we here it's saying we get a 10-year warranty, which is awesome. That's the integrated Ryko Lyra suspension. So basically, that's the actual shock mount that the mic's got built into it, is one of the Lyra types by Ryko, which is awesome. Also, it comes with an LB1 lithium ion battery. More about that in a little bit later when I pull it out the box. And also, it says that the windshield has got an optimized shape. Not entirely sure what that means, but hopefully that's something to do with deflecting wind a bit better and stuff like that. Actually, on this side as well, we've got a nice picture of uh, one of the mics on top of a camera. There we go. And also with the, the road logo with the nice gold dot on the bottom, as I made mention of another <laughs> on another unboxing. I mean, I don't know, like, you know, why somebody would get really excited about a gold dot, but I did. Anyway, so if we have a look up here as well. Also, as well, you have to bear with me on this video as well. I've uh, I've been in bed for about three days here. I've come down with something quite nasty, and uh, I think it's affected me throat as well by the sounds of it. So if you just have a little look on there as well, once again, if there's any details of any relevance or whatnot, just kind of pause the video and have a look at that, and then I'll get to the underneath. Being careful to block some information there. And then what we should be able to see there is the final bits of detail and information about the microphone. Okay, so as it stands then, that's what it says on the outside of the box and whatnot. So let me just get at the box here a second. Hold on. So hopefully this all comes undone fairly well fairly much with, without any hassle and I think it did okay so what happens is it all gets packaged in like you know these this like clamshell affair as it were so it's just like two halves like a clamshell so let me just pop this open okay and then inside here we've got all the gubbins so let me just pull all this out and then I'll go over it once I've got it all out okay Again, just to give myself a little bit more space. In fact, you know what? While I'm at it, let me do this as well. Hold on. Let's rip off the, the dead cat there. So there's also the dead cat. Now, I won't get to that just yet. So let me just put that out the way. I just thought I would unbox it. Just so I've got everything all undone. So I can't miss anything as I go around it all. Now, what we've got here is a quick start guide and whatnot there. Now, you know, I don't think I'm going to kind of open, I don't think I will open that up. Only because, you know, it's a quick start guide. I think we can all probably hazard the guess as to what's going on with that. Although, it does give some information about what the buttons do and stuff. But hopefully, I'll get to show you that shortly anyway. Okay, so that's the quick start guide. They're always useful, but obviously, they're not quite as useful as a full-blown manual or guide. And to be honest, with most microphones, you don't even really need any form of quick start, I wouldn't imagine. Although, in this instance, the quick start will come in handy because of the functions of the microphone. Or at least to do with its buttons. So now what we've got here, let me get that out of there. So that's all the packaging. Oh, wait there now. Packets of sweets there. Now they're not sweets. Whatever you do, don't eat them things. <laughs> you get a bit of an upset stomach off them. Right, okay. So what we've got here is a battery. And I'll get to more about that in a second. We've got our TRS to TRS cable here. So as we can see, TRS to TRS, little 3.5 millimeter patch cable. Okay, then we also have, I don't know, what's that U USB B to A, is it? A USB cable, and that's quite specifically for charging the battery when it's inside the microphone. Okay, and then as far as the microphone itself is concerned, 
what it is in fact let me just push them a bit further out the way actually have i got this on a slant here i oh, don't know do you know i might have to t <laughs> actually the table's not on a slant it'd be the camera wouldn't it not the table because <laughs> if the table's on a slant i think it'd be falling off probably <laughs> anyway yeah so the i think the table's wonky or the camera's wonky to the table but i don't think it's gonna yeah you know, it shouldn't give us too much hassle actually doing this unboxing okay so um yeah there's the there's the microphone as it stands there and as we can see it's all nicely built into the Lara shock mount. Now, just quickly, what it is, all this kind of suspension that you can see here, that is actually a little kind of like system which is designed by Rycoat. And Rode actually licensed the Lara shock mount system from Rycoat for, well, a ton of the Rode mics have actually got these Lara mounts on. And to be honest as well, they are very good, they're very useful. And they're, they're a lot, kind of like a lot neater than the old kind of like elastic band type stuff. So, you know, all your like older traditional suspension mounts and stuff where you'd have like a lot of like elasticated rubber and stuff and whatnot involved. That just gets rid of all that. So it's going to be longer wearing and stuff. I, I still don't know as to whether or not the, the, the rubber type is actually a bet, is, is a better mechanism for like absorption and stuff, you know, for acoustically transmitted energy. So like if you receive a knock, so if that was say placed on a boom pole or something, I'm not entirely sure if the lighter is actually better than rubber, but it's definitely a lot longer wearing and stuff and a lot easier to use and looks you know, probably looks better as well, you know, if the truth be known. Not that realistically, when when it comes to things like, you know, audio devices or video devices, if something's got an important job to do, I would personally say how it looks should be secondary to its performance and its job. But anyway, that's the line amount there. And then underneath that, there's like a little bar there. And on there, what we have is a cold shoe mount as well. So that's basically the male section of a shoe mount. So you can lob that into, well, you can put it into a hot or cold shoe. I wouldn't recommend really putting things like that, which are all like, you know, bare metals and stuff into a hot shoe in case there was any rubbing against any of the contacts on a hot shoe. But nonetheless, that's what that's for. And then it closes over with that and locks tight onto a cold or hot shoe. Okay. Also as well, in fact, I might as well show it now. This has got a really cool filter already built in. So this like foam filter here, what you do, you kind of like just pop it off the back like that because it seals. Let's see if you can see that a bit easier there. Right, it seals itself around the back. So it's basically a gasket. So this here, or the back end of the actual foam, it's like a very tough rubber. And as you can see, you kind of pop it off there. There we go. And so that just kind of fits over the back like that and seals itself in. So let me just pop that off there. So that's the, that's the what's name. That's the foam one that comes with it. And then this is the X one that you have to buy. So this is the, uh, the fairy one or the dead cat. And then the same thing, when, when you put this on, as you do, push it right up to the end and then just pop it over on the edge like that. I think what you need to do is don't don't you know don't be too frightened to kind of like you know put a bit of pressure into it and stuff because I think it's actually designed to be a fairly solid fit so you will have to kind of get your fingers in and pop it off and then do the same thing get it on as well so just make sure that you've got a very very nice tight fit there okay now just to continue with the rest of this video I'm going to pull that off as well now, the only reason why I'm taking them off is because it's probably going to be a bit easier now to start seeing other stuff. Okay, so there's the battery there. And then all that, all you do here, there's like a little door mechanism here on the mic body. So you just get that there. And then there's the same on the other side, just little spring mount. So you click them in and pull the door open. And there you go, doors open, pop the battery in. Now what you'll notice as well, the battery will only go in one way, so you can't get this wrong. Okay, so there you go, so battery's in. Now that battery will charge in place with that cable, so as you do, just pop the cable in there. 
and then there you go just pop it into you know just a five volt supply or a usb supply then you're off charging the battery i believe you get around a hundred hours which is absolutely insane on a full charge of this now if in the event that you get caught outdoors and whatnot then what's really cool is that particular battery system there happens to take up the same shape as two um, AA batteries. So if you get stuck and you run out of a charge on this battery, you can actually just pop in two AA's. In fact, give me one second. Okay, so there's two AA batteries there. So what I'm going to do is pop them in. And what, what you do, you pop them in one on top of the other, positive ends first. So I'll just pop that one in like that, pop that one in like that, close it over, and there you go. So really simple. So once again, if you run out of charge and you just can't get access to charge the battery, you can pop in two double A's there, which probably makes it really nice and convenient. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take them two double A's out. And then, and then I'll pop the battery back in again. Once again, it'll only go in the wrong way around. So if you're a complete nugget like me, you can't get it wrong. Okay, so there we go then. So that's all back in. Now we've seen what that's doing. Let me get that out the way. So now what I'm gonna do is just pop the cable on. And you might think, okay, yeah, well, we've all seen cables go on. But there was something here as well that I didn't notice straight away myself. And that is underneath here, there's actually like a little cable tidy system there. So right underneath the Lyra, hopefully we can get a grip and see that there. There's a little thing where you can slot the cable into. So let me just double check. Yeah, so there we go. So now I've just looped, well not looped, but I've gripped the cable with that little kind of cable tidy there. Hopefully we can see that. So what that basically means is that once you've got your, your microphone sitting on top of whatever camera, by the time you've plugged one end into the back of the microphone, the other end into the camera, then just find where best suits you to like get the length right and then tie it up against that little kind of cable tidy there. And I suppose you could even do a little loop as well and then attach it through and whatnot. But nonetheless, that'll stop you from having like cables flapping around all over the place. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just get onto this last bit, which is to show what, what is on the back and how it all works. Okay, so what I'll probably do here is, um, I'll probably zoom into this in post actually. Okay, so a little bit of wrestling just to get this simple switch switched on. So try again, right? So pop that in, there we go, blue light. Right, so the blue light is just telling us that we're on. There's no other light indicators on here whatsoever. So at this point, all we're doing is, you know, being in on mode without any of the functions being applied, which the microphone is capable of doing, which I will run through now. But just another quick one whilst we're on this. What happens here? When you plug the microphone into a something, say a camcorder or a DSLR or whatever it's plugged into, if you then switch off the other device, what will happen here is the microphone has kind of got some sensing circuitry to know when it's being disengaged or when the thing that it's plugged into is being switched off. So the microphone will automatically switch itself off as well. And from what I understand, when you switch back on, as long as you've left everything all like, you know, cabled up, you switch the camera back on, the microphone will switch back on as well. I mean, that's something that I'll get into as well once I start doing some like proper full blown tests with this microphone. Anyway, so from here on in, let me just show the functions on the back. So what it is, we have got two frequencies for bass roll off, 150 hertz and 75 hertz. And we get access to that particular filter section with this button here. So this button with the obvious bass, with the, with the bass roll off, uh, diagram on that's what you click in for the bass roll off so if we click it once it'll tell us that we're in 75 hertz for the bass roll off click it again and we're in 150 hertz click it click it again and it disengages okay so that's pr pretty much self-explanatory up to this point now we've got this thing that says db plus minus so this is effectively our boost and attenuation as far as level or gain is concerned so if we click it in once 
we, we will see up here we get a green light next to plus 20 so right now what we're getting is a plus 20 db above what the microphone is already set at so assuming the mic's at zero or zero to a something that gives us a plus 20 dBs worth of extra gain. Now, what's really important about that is that if you're on some kind of a system, maybe a DSLR or something like that, which isn't particularly like sensitive as far as its input is concerned, that plus 20 dB will definitely give you enough signal to kind of like, you know, well, basically just to, to jack up any input that you're ever likely to put it into. A plus 20, I don't think there's anything that you will not be able to plug this into and get a you know get a, a a healthy signal out of it. Now, if we click it again, the the dB plus minus button. This time it goes to minus ten. Now, the reason why you might want to go minus ten is maybe you've gone really close to a loud sound, or even you may be on a a camera system or a recording system. Because don't forget, this can be used on any audio recording system where you can actually convert the cables to and fro. So this fits into, say, just an external recorder. Now, in that instance, what you may find is that the microphone itself may be very loud, in which case you can tell the microphone to be minus 10 below its nominal uh, level, in which case you don't have to kind of overdrive the input of whatever you're going into. So basically between the plus 20 and the minus 10, you've kind of covered a lot of bases there for either recording devices that are not so sensitive or some that are too sensitive. So that'll cover all your bases. And then the third click on it takes it back out again. Now, we've got two other functions here. One of them is a, is a kind of boost in the HF. And let's see if we can get to this. So what you do, the shelf button there and the DB plus minus button, click them both at the same time. And what, what that will do is activate the upper boost there. So what that's going to do is add a lot more presence into the recording. Now, that is probably going to be useful for when you're using a dead cat and stuff like that. Or you may just even like that particular tone. So the thing is, where is like you've got like these shelves here for like bass roll off? Quite often, they're a technical requirement, but sometimes... To do, you know, when you want to add, say, a little bit more kind of brightness to something, it's not necessarily that you need it technically, whereas you might need a 75 or 150 hertz roll off to counteract certain rumble and stuff that you might be picking up. So, in that instance, 150 and 75 is more of a technical thing that you would want to use to avoid certain types of rumble in the recording. But this HF booster here, I mean, I imagine it's probably going to come into its own when it's got the dead cat on. Again, all these things I will test in, in other videos. But that might just be one of those things where it might just make the tone go a certain way. And you go, well, actually, I do like that. So I would test that out anyway, whether you think you need it or not. Because it might just give you a different tone, which you just might be more happier with something a bit brighter, maybe. And then obviously if we click these in together again, it'll disengage that function. Then what we've also got is another function here, which is represented by these two bars. One bar is like higher than the other. And the smaller one is minus 10 dB lower than the taller one. And how we get to that is if we hold the dB plus minus button and the power button and do a little momentary switch with the pair of them, we actually then switch in this minus 10 dB mode. So what happens is here, what's happening is the left or the channel two, sorry, right or channel two of the output. Don't forget, this is not a stereo microphone, although it uses two channels to record on your recording system. It's only, it's only one mono microphone, but it splits itself across left and right or one and two and equally applies the same level across them usually. Now in this mode here, what happens is the second channel or the right hand side that you're recording from the same signal, bear in mind it's all mono. What happens is it has a, a attenuation of minus 10 applied to it so basically what you're doing there you're turning your like 
input to or your right channel into a safety track. So basically what this means is if your left channel or channel one is your main track, and let's just say there's during a record and you momentarily peak above zero and clip, what that will mean is as long as you haven't gone over by more than 10 dB, which is highly unlikely anyway, the second track or the safety track or the safety channel or channel two or the right channel will have the same audio there, but at minus 10 dB quieter. So if you happen to peek over on the left channel or the main channel, should we say, you've then got a minus 10 dB version on the second channel there or channel two or the right channel. So that will definitely get you out of scrapes if you're likely to ever clip your main input. So again, you know, use that one at your own discretion. And if you want to use it all the time, at least you're guaranteeing yourself of some form of safety within one recording system. Because don't forget, usually to get redundancy, you'd have to go to two, you know, two separate systems. But at least here, you know, when you're just within one system, you're affording yourself, you know, a little bit of redundancy there as well. Okay, so I think that's probably all it that I can explain about all these buttons and stuff. So let me just get all this stuff on the table now. Okay, so there's all the stuff that comes in the package. And I think just for safe measure, and you're gonna pop the dead cat in there as well. And I'm only putting that in there just only because I think that in order to make this system work properly or, or to make it work most effectively, you're probably going to have to use a dead cat for that. Anyway, yeah, I know this has been probably a little bit of an unorthodox unboxing and whatnot, but hopefully I've gotten into part... Oh, do you know what? I'm looking at the screen here. This is definitely wonky. <laughs> I'm going to have to sort this out for the next video. But anyway, yeah, hopefully during this video... I've shown certain things to do with the, the operation of the microphone, which may be the kind of things that you're more interested in as opposed to a standard unboxing. Because uh, let's face it, yeah, a billion times this has been done, but uh, whether or not people have explained it in such a way as far as the button configurations are concerned, I don't know. But rest assured, there will be future videos now that have kind of got all this in play. And I will be going through a number of the functions. And like some of my more recent videos, of which this isn't one of the shorter ones for some reason i've just gone rabbiting on like a complete loony here but what i will do i will kind of cut up a few different videos for this particular microphone and do very specific short ones about specific functions one of them will be to do with that safety track function as well because it will show an example of rescuing a recording because you've used that and had that in plugged in when you hit allow peak which otherwise would massively destroy the entire take anyways i'm going to shoot off here so if you've liked this video give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel leave a comment all that funky youtube stuff and keep an eye out for more of the stuff that i'm going to do with this road kit in the future anyway i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now